what would you do if you wanted to set up different scroll triggers and animations for various screen sizes, like maybe a desktop version and a mobile version? Let's say we want this green desktop div to animate on scroll when the screen is at least 800 pixels wide, otherwise the purple mobile div should animate instead. Well, we could run conditional logic like this when the page loads, but then what if the user resizes their screen after the page loads? Maybe they already scrolled down and things are pinned at that time. Are you going to keep track of all your scroll trigger instances and kill them before running a setup routine for the new screen size? It could get messy, but don't worry. Scroll triggers match media method will make everything a lot easier. Now let's start by just focusing on the desktop animation. So we'll create a timeline and we will add two tweens to it. Uh, one's going to scale up and rotate, and then the other one's going to scale back down. So if we just run the animation, it happens really quickly, but of course we want to link this to the scroll position. So let's do that in the timeline. Create an object in here, we'll pass in scroll trigger. Make an object, uh, let's say the trigger is going to be the, the element with the gray class applied to it. And when that hits the uh, top, the top of that hits the top of the viewport, then we want to pin it and we will have the end position, let's just have it last twice the height of it, so 200%. And we want to scrub, we'll do a, a smooth scrub, so we'll put one in there, so it takes a second to catch up. So now if we run this, we should see that if I scroll down, there it is, tied exactly to the position of the scroll bar. All right, perfect. We've got our desktop animation set up but we want to bring in match media so that we can have a different setup for mobile. And we do that by putting this into a match media call. And we simply pass an object to match media. And for each media query, we'll use a key. So for the desktop, we are going to say the min width will be 800 pixels. We set that to a function. And inside this function, that is where we do all of our setup. So we'll just copy all this code from here and we will paste it in there and dent it. So now this function will get called every time that media query is true. And then anytime that it's not true, it keeps track of any scroll triggers that are created inside of this function. And it will revert those. It'll kind of tear those down when it's no longer true. And before we run this, I wanna show you that in our CSS, we have a regular CSS media query set up so that when it's below 800 pixels, we set the width of these two elements, the mobile and desktop, to be 100 pixels instead of 200. And that makes it easy for us to see when we cross that threshold. So let me just comment out all this code so that we can run this and we'll see that when I resize down, those indeed get smaller and when I pass 800 pixels wide, then they jump up in size. So again, there's there's nothing with scroll trigger happening here. It's just a regular media query that's setting styles on those elements. So let us uncomment this and activate this again. So now if we run this, we've got this media query set up so that it's going to do our animation, uh, you know, all our scroll trigger stuff at this size because we are beyond 800 pixels. So now when I scroll down, our scroll trigger magic is working. But if I resize the viewport down and now I try to drag and scroll, then the scroll trigger is no longer happening. It's no longer active at all. It's been uh, reverted, torn down, thrown away because this media query is not true anymore. And then if I go back up, we'll see that indeed as I scroll down, yep, it is active. It's working as we would expect. So now we've got our desktop version. How about our mobile version? All we got to do is just copy this, paste it in here, and then we will, of course, change the media query itself so that it uses a different one. And then we will target the mobile element instead of desktop. So it's the same animation, different elements, and different media queries. So we should only see one of these animations happening at a given time. So if we run this, since we are wider than 800 pixels, if I scroll down, we see the desktop element animating. And then if I scroll down, we see that we are at the mobile version. And if I scroll down, we'll see that, yep, indeed, the mobile element is animated. And even if I scroll down to part way, you know, and this is partially um, rotated right in the middle of the animation, resize the screen beyond 800 pixels, then we see that it matched up perfectly and it reapplied to the desktop version. So inside of our setup functions here, 
I'll resize it so we can see the code better. So for the our desktop version, here I'll label this. And so in our desktop version, you can have as many scroll triggers set up in here. You know, all your code can go in here. You don't have to do a different match media call for each and everything you're trying to set up. All of your instructions should be in here that are specific to that size. And then there's also a specially named all. You know, in here you can put stuff that applies no matter what size the screen is. And that's pretty much the same thing as if we were to run the code outside of the match media function. But this just makes it a little more readable and logical to just easily read through. Here's our desktop setup, here's our mobile setup, and then here's the thing that persists for everything. And you can add as many media queries as you want. If you ever run into a situation where inline CSS styles that were set up in one media query are contaminating another media query after a resize, you may need to use the save styles method. First, let me explain the issue. So let's animate the desktop element to a width of 300 instead of doing the scales. Let's just say width 300 and that's all we'll do. We'll just get rid of this other animation. So very, very simple. And then we'll completely delete all this stuff in the mobile version just so we can focus on this. Okay, so when we run, we'll see that as we scroll down, it indeed starts at 200 pixels and then it animates to 300 pixels, as we would expect, no problem. However, if we resize, look what happens. Remember, we have that media query in CSS that is setting things to a width of 100 pixels. But look, the desktop one is still at 200 pixels instead of getting reset to 100. Why is that happening? If we look at the elements, if we inspect it in DevTools, we'll see there's an inline style of a width of 200. So scroll trigger did its job of rewinding that tween that we had created and returning the width to what it was at the start of the tween. But CSS related tweens always set inline styles. So that inline style overrides the CSS rule in the media query because it's more specific. So the key here is to revert the inline styles to what they were when the page loaded. And that's precisely what save styles does. So let's close our inspector. And when the page loads, we want to call scroll trigger dot save styles. And then we just pass in, it could be selector text, it could be a DOM element, or it could be an array of DOM elements. But in this case, we'll just use selector text and we'll say that we want to save the styles of mobile as well as desktop. So again, what that does is it just records internally in scroll trigger the current inline styles of those elements so that then when it reverts, it applies those inline CSS styles uh, as a part of that reversion. So now when we run, we get bigger, scroll down, gets wider, scroll back up, it's narrower, resize, and it works as we would expect. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to post in our forums at greensock.com forums. Happy tweening.